Hello, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to be covering eight key mistakes made on resumes and how you can avoid them. Don't forget to like this video with a thumbs up if you feel the information is helpful. Subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Okay, let's get started. Now, if you're trying to create your resume from scratch, I do recommend you pause and watch our other video that talks about the best resume format for 2020. It'll help you get past all of those search filters and gates and get right into the hands of hiring managers and recruiters. But for our top eight things that you should avoid on your resume, here is number one. Typos. I know it's crazy for me to have to say that nowadays with everything being so electronic. However, you would not believe the number of resumes that me and my team see daily with typos in them. And if you're using a program like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word has a built-in spell checker. And what does it do if you have a typo on your resume? It underlines it in red. And what that does is draw the recruiter's eye right to that typo you need to make sure you spell check your document. Now, spell checker is not foolproof and it won't catch when you're using two as in T-O-O and two as in T-W-O. So how do you catch common problems like those? Well, how editors do it is they look at a document backwards and read it from the bottom up. It helps break up the flow in your mind and causes you to focus more on what you're reading. Otherwise, just have a friend and another friend and another friend take a look to make sure there's no typos. Let's move on to our next key mistake. Failure to translate position-specific information. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you were in the military. You want to have that great experience on your resume, but if you use words that are only known within the military, it may be something that's lost on the recruiter or person looking at your resume. Make sure you translate any acronyms or any names of things that you think the outside non-military personnel won't understand. Another example of this can be, let's say you're working for a company and you're put as the lead of Project Gemini. Well, that may mean a lot to you. It probably means nothing to anybody else, but if you tell me that you were placed as the lead on a project that was going to be implementing a software throughout your entire company globally, that means something to me. So make sure you translate any specific data that the outside world won't know outside your company into information they will understand. Here's another mistake that is commonly made on resumes, irrelevant, or inappropriate data. Now there are three main offenders that we see when we're talking about inappropriate or irrelevant data on your resume. Let's break them down. The first is pictures. In the US, it is not appropriate to have a picture on your resume. Now that is not the same throughout the entire world. There are some countries where you should have a picture and in fact it is required but in the US, you should not have a picture on your resume. Why is that? Sometimes human resources departments will stop that resume from getting to the hiring manager. Why would they do that? They're trying to make sure that the recruiting and hiring process is completely unbiased and they don't want decisions to be made based on the details in that picture, like gender or ethnicity or age your best to not include a picture on your resume if you're in the US. The next bit of data you should avoid on your resume is high school graduation dates. Now this is very US specific. In the US, high school is a linear path. You start in kindergarten, go first up through eighth grade, and then join high school in ninth grade and graduate in 12th. Which means by listing your high school graduation dates, somebody can bring that date backwards to see the year you were born in, or pretty close. You wanna avoid having those dates on your resume as they are a direct link to your age. Another piece of irrelevant data that you should avoid putting on your resume is hobbies that don't relate to your profession 
and don't add to your value as a candidate. Remember, your resume is precious real estate. You want to use it wisely. It's great that you may like to read or take long walks in the park, but nobody is going to make a hiring decision based on those. You need to remove data like that from your resume. You want the recruiters and hiring managers focused on your skills and experience that is important and will land you that job over the next candidate. Another one of the key mistakes we often see on resumes is what I like to term artistic overindulgence. Now, in the good old days, when we used to get paper resumes through the mail, we would see things like different colored paper or fancy clips, or even someone spraying perfume on the resume to make it smell nice. What we see nowadays is people trying to stand out by being over artistic in how their resume is formatted. And the only people that I believe can get away with this is people that where design is part of their job skills. If you are a graphic designer, you probably want some really artistic resume that you can hand to somebody to show them your artistic skills. But for everybody else, and even for those designers online, you need to have a resume that is going to easily load into all of the applicant tracking systems. If you're not sure about a good format for this, Please watch our other video on the 2020 resume format, but we'll show you a good format you can utilize to get past all those applicant tracking systems. So what do I mean by artistic overindulgence? It can be something where your resume is usually in a very linear path, and instead you choose to take your skills and put them on this side and then do a box over here with a recommendation and then a box down here with your experience. If you choose to use a resume in that path, what can happen sometimes is the applicant tracking systems choke on them. You may have experienced this if you tried to upload your resume on a company website and it said unable to upload and it required you to manually fill in the data. You don't want that to happen. If you really like your resume, the way it looks artistic, that's fine. That's the resume that you actually hand to the hiring manager when you come in for your interview. But make sure you have one that is in a format that is friendly to all of these applicant tracking systems for all of the online job searching. Let's move on. The next thing we see is people that have a resume that looks like a job description. If your resume is just a copy of all the job descriptions that you were given from your last employers, it's not appropriate. Can we tell the difference? Yes, we can. Your resume should not say things like, this position is required to visit with the field on a weekly basis. Instead, you wanna be focused on what you're doing within each role, how you're doing it, and what the results are. Stay away from a job description and make it be a resume. If you're in a manager or a leadership role, this next key mistake is for you. You need to make sure your resume is not all full with nothing but I. What do I mean by that? I did this. I accomplished this. I saved the company this amount of dollars. I was the one that was able to fix this software so it worked. If you are in a manager or a leadership position, companies and recruiters want to see how you've been managing and leading teams. If your entire resume is filled with I, we tend to think that you're not a good manager or team leader. Don't lead us there. Make sure you're highlighting appropriately how you've managed and led the organization to do great things and do great accomplishments. So what's our number seven key mistake we see on resumes? Failure to put information about the companies you worked for. Now this is important for two reasons. One, while you know what your company did, the recruiter or hiring manager may not, and the title of the company may not lead them to understand what the industry is. I recommend on everybody's resume, they put one to two sentences right under the company name explaining that company. It's a big difference if you are a manager at a company with 20 people than if you are a manager at a company that has 20,000 people. 200,000 people. 
It's different if you worked for a company that's a nonprofit, a public, a privately owned. And you wanna also be able to include information about what industry that company is in. Is it medical? Is it IT, oil and gas, automotive? You wanna have all that information to be able to explain better your experience. It also is great keywords when people are searching for you online. Make sure you include information about your companies on your resume. Ready for our number one mistake never ever to make on your resume? It's falsifying data. Now this can happen in several different ways, sometimes on purpose and sometimes not on purpose. If you mishandle dates on your resume, or if your resume and your LinkedIn profile do not match on dates, a company will see that as falsifying data. You never ever want to be seen as falsifying data on your resume. Now there are some that choose to just put things on their resume that is absolutely false, thinking they will not get caught. Please do not do this. I have lots of examples of people that have gotten terminated for falsifying data on an application, resume, or other company documentation. I know of individuals who have not gotten roles or had offers rescinded because they falsified data. If you think you won't get caught, you will. Please don't ever, ever falsify data on your resume. I hope this set of eight key mistakes commonly made on resumes has been helpful to you. Again, if you feel like your resume is not formatted the best for 2020 to get past all of these applicant tracking systems, please take the time to watch our other video. We have a resume format on there that is specifically made to help you get past all of those systems. Our team is working hard to come out with as many videos as we can, as quickly as we can, in order to help all the many job seekers out on the market today. If there is something that you would like us to focus on for the future, please put it in the comments below and we'll try to get a video up for you as quick as we can. We're all in this together.